Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome back to Dare to Dream. Today, I've got psychic medium and trans channel mystic, Riz Mirza. He is here today. And Riz is known as the only full physical trans channel who can channel different known interdimensional spirit guides and give accurate and detailed individual messages. This show, Dare to Dream, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. We recently won the Coalition of Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, and Dare to Dream is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here. H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to drdanehere.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I am a media visibility expert. What I do out in the world is I am a book writing coach. I also show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts for massive results. And the third leg is my international best-selling book program, guaranteed, fully done for the author. And I am letting my audience know because y'all participated last time. Yes, I'm rolling out another five-day challenge. Super excited about it because I love who I get to meet and work with. It is the five-day podcast interview challenge. And what will you get? You're going to learn how to get a yes to becoming scheduled on radio and podcasts, know where the shows are, what to put together, what your speaking and talking points are to give to the host for the interview. I show you how to do the entire system, no matter where you are. And if you are a visible visionary, you need to be more visible right now. You came here to shine your light. Let me help you. Go to debbyd.net slash challenge. It's D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash challenge. You can get hundreds of bookings, have your media info ready, correct approach to get a yes, engage with influencers. And isn't it time to get new clients, fill workshops, sell books? Yes. Increase your email database. I have done this for hundreds and hundreds of people privately, and now I'm offering it through the five-day challenge. Sign up today. It's rolling out. Be one of the lucky ones to learn this system and use this skill, debbyd.net. So Riz Mirza is here, and for over 15 years as a shaman, he has channeled numerous spirit guides who have healed and uplifted thousands of people in live full trance channel gatherings called the Circle of Light. Riz is one of the only top psychic medium full trance channels of our generation. And he's known to channel publicly while giving individual personal messages to the entire group. And also he is the only one who has channeled over 100 different well-known spirit guides, all documented and recorded in front of a live audience consistently for over 10 years. I also want to give him a little plug. This is one of his books, and this is called The Nine Keys. He's got several out there all on Amazon. So if you like what you see today and want to engage, you can further. And also his website is rizmirza.com. It's R-I-Z-M-I-R-Z-A dot Com. And I am so excited. I welcome Riz to the Dare to Dream show. So great to have you. Hi, Debbie. Hi. I was feeling really excited. I don't always get that when I'm starting a show, but there was something in me that was getting really pumped oh. about being with you today. Uh, so I feel like. Well, this little... is the month, right? This is, it's October, it's Halloween time. So maybe it's, they say this is when the, the veil is thinnest mm. in, um, on the planet Earth. You know about that, right? I mean, how the how I've been very interested. When I was a kid, I was interested in Halloween because it was so much fun to dress up. Yeah. But you know, as a kid, I was also aware that I was aware, like I could feel um, mm. spirits or energies. As I came to know it later, I didn't know if that's what it was back then. I was a kid that was just afraid to um, go to bed by myself. I was afraid to look in the closet. I was afraid to go into the basement, and it was because I felt things and my parents used to say, why don't you go downstairs and, and play? And I didn't want to go. And um, you can tuck yourself into bed. And for me, it was 
a truth that I felt things. And for my, they would say, well, your brothers don't feel anything. The first time I ever said, well, I feel like somebody's watching me or something. And they, they thought it was watching too many, uh, too many, too much TV, too much, too many movies. You know, my parents came from India and settled in New York city. And, um, it was a very, very big cultural shock and change for them on top of having a kid that was having psychic experiences. So, was there anybody else in your family? Is that a lineage of no, psychic abilities? Really? Not that I know of, but it's interesting because my mom was a poet and I feel that, and just from my own experience that a lot of mediums and intuitives have some connection to a fine arts background. So they will be musicians or they will be actors or they will be dancers or they will be painters or they will be poets because art is, art is channeled, isn't it? I mean, people get ideas for poems and, and songs and, and characters that they put into movies and characters they put into books. So I believe that we all channel in a particular way. So mm. for all these years, people have been at, they tend to ask me, so what is a channeler? And I say, well, I, I can tell you what channeling is and you all do it. Everyone who's watching this, you guys all channel something. And let me just break that down for you. So when we're channeling, and if you look at the word channel, it's the same root of the word canal. Hmm. Okay, channel and canal are the same word. What are they referring to? So you have the English channel, you have the Suez Canal. What are they? They're passageways that allow the water to come through and boats to come through and drop off their packages and their passengers, right? So the channel in all of us is this space that spirit or spiritual energy comes through or universal knowledge comes through us and drops off information. <laughs> That's the passengers or the packages. They drop off information to us. So we are channeling when we step out of the way. When we step out of the way and we relax and we allow things to just come through us and land. Now, here's what's interesting. The thing that you may channel may not necessarily be the activity that you're really crazy about. There's some people who are just good at things. I've known people who are just really good at math, but they weren't into math or we're really good at baseball, but we're really that good into baseball, we're that much into baseball. So it's not necessarily the thing that you love to do, but something that you do where when you're doing it, you kind of forget all sense of time and you're not really trying so hard, but things are landing in a particular way, like right on the money that and you can feel that thing that's happening. So I call that channeling. And when it comes to spirit guides, so some people channel being an accountant and, and some people channel being a singer. And so I channel spirit guides. Well, well what is that, right? We, we know them to be these guardians, these watchers, these protectors, these angels around us. We have different names for them. As a shaman, I call them spirit guides. You guys can call them whatever name you want. But it is, it is definitely, I think, a fact that we're not alone. We're not alone. There's there's too many people who have had experiences out there that may not be as dramatic as the ones that I have where spirit guides are channeling through my body. But you, I mean, you must have so many stories yourself about where you did feel like you said something, but it wasn't really you, but it just came out. Blah, you just said it and the person needed to hear it. Yeah, I, for me, it's more downloads. I know what I know what I know for, for sure. Clear Cindy and clear cognizant. And I know stuff and I feel stuff and I've learned not to doubt. And it's sometimes it's a bummer, you know, because sometimes I'll feel something and I know something's off in somebody's world and mm -hmm. they're doing something I won't be pleased with or, you know, and it's right. It's invariably right. And How do you figure out the difference between your thoughts and your downloads. You know, different, right? Absolutely different. You know, a thought is open ended and a download is for show mm -hmm. And I doubted myself. I did so much with all of this. I pushed it. I pulled it. I made myself wrong. I'm too sensitive. I never understood any of it. And when I was first starting in radio 15 years ago, I had a psychic on. And when we're done with the show, she said, stick around. I have something to tell you. You don't know. Mm. And I did. And she said, you need to know you're clairsentient. And I want you to look it up and call me when you're ready. And I spent three days looking up that word, freaking out in the best way. Mm. 
Mm. Oh my God. There was such a completion to me, like, and an ownership. I actually had fun with it for a while. Like, oh. Because you knew. And that's how yeah. teachers show up. Some teachers show up for mm. five minutes and some for five decades, but each can give you something very potent. You know, people ask me all the time, this thing happened. Was, do you think that was a sign? And I say, yeah, if you think it was a sign, it's a sign because that feeling that you're thinking it's a sign is the feeling you're looking for when there is a sign. It's not just, uh, it's not, there's nothing random that's happening. We're creating this reality. And I've been seeing you know, 15 years of doing this work professionally, but being a psychic my entire life. Um, I'm 53 now. So I have seen how it's changed and how people even 10 or 15 years ago, and you guys know this, almost no one was, no one in the mass consciousness was talking about crystals or Reiki or spirit guides or shaman work or psychedelic therapy or anything like this. This wasn't um, a part of normal conversation, even in LA. Even <laughs> in light. LA, it's true. <laughs> this light went off. Did you notice that? I had a little light over here. Am I too dark now? No, it, it's actually very cool. It's very noir, what's going on behind dramatic. you. But yes, I like it. Okay, <laughs> see, who knows why that light went off. The battery was charged, but as soon as we start talking about spirits, they like to let I you like know. It. Okay. I like it, I like it. So what was I saying? So you were saying- Oh, how it's changed, right? So now people- Yes, even in LA, they didn't do crystals and Reiki and channeling. Yeah, yeah. not mass consciousness. I have four stepdaughters, um, ages 16 to 30. And TikTok, which most people know as dancing and having fun and pulling pranks and kids just having fun. We would have done it too if we were 15. And, but there's a whole other section of TikTok, which they call spiritual TikTok. Oh, where there oh. are a million videos posted by 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds mm. talking about spirit guides, talking about auras, crystals, creating a reality, dimensional talk. 10 years ago, these kids were six. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come to my circle of light, which has been two or three times a week since 2000, uh, probably six, over 2000 circles now where I'm channeling, I'm in trance state for a couple of hours in front of a group of people. And the spirit guides are speaking through me, giving everyone messages. It's a wisdom circle. So when we first start, the spirit guides come into the body and they speak to the whole group, right? So they're talking about maybe anger or fear or um, extraterrestrials, who knows what the topic is. Then they go around to each person giving a personal message and one of, the, one of the things that I really love is that people have brought their kids. They've asked me, can I bring the kids? Speaking mm -hmm. of how young they are. Uh, I think there's a consciousness that is absolutely fast moving shift and change happening in young people. Um, I mean, it's, it's astounding and I'm glad to see it. And look, in the beginning, like in anything, when people really get excited about something, you're gonna have people who know this much and you're gonna have people who know this much. So there are things that I see they, they're talking about that they're not quite schooled in, mm -hmm. right? Because you need time and, and I'm not gonna say they're wrong because when it comes to metaphysical and spirituality, just one thing I've learned as a medium is anything is possible. So anytime someone says something to me, I go, anything is possible. Let's start with that. We do not know the scope of the entire reality of everything everywhere. What we're discussing on these talks and in these seminars and in these readings, hopefully, is what we're exploring and discovering as we are experiencing reality and our study of energy, that everything is energy. Yeah. And then we, we, we come back and we share with each other. That's what we're doing. That's what I do. Spirit guides do that. They speak in a language that we can understand and they also speak like a little ahead of us as well to guide, to guide us. That's what a guide is. They're a few steps ahead of you and they're going, come on this way. Let me yeah. show you. Yeah. So you've come very far from being in the Bronx and being known as Rick the Wiz. Riz the Wiz, <laughs> not Rick, because that would be really strange. Riz the Riz. Wiz. <laughs> uh, I, I, 
I had an arts background. I sang, I played the drums. I, I was a painter. I tried my hand in musical theater, everything. I had a talent for art in any, in a lot of capacities. And um, I, I look at it and see it that it's, it's a form of channeling. Mm. It's a form of channeling. So you can connect. A lot of people say, how do I, how do I practice connecting to my spirit guides? This is something that I, a big mm. question I get from people. All right. There's a few ways. One is you have to meditate. You have to practice meditation. There's no way around it. Now, there's a lot of people who say, well, I can't meditate. And I say, well, I bet you you're meditating doing, doing things that you don't realize you're meditating. It might be while you're driving. It might be while you are um, playing a video game. There's something, there's, you're tuning other things out. So I, I tell people, number one, you have to relax. You have to have fun, even though it seems very serious and very, it's very important to you to connect with your guides. I know how, how much you guys take it seriously and you should, but you can't do it stiff. So anything that loosens you up, art usually loosens you up. Dancing, singing, playing an instrument, that's important. It, it's that energy that's behind that. Uh, so that's what led me to do it. Uh, and. Um, yeah, from the long way from the Bronx, you might say. You're right. You're right. Yeah, totally. Well, we have New York. I'm also from New York, Long Island. Are you really? Oh, Background wow. in musical theater. Yeah. As an actress, most of my time. No. <laughs> Let's do a psychic show. Let's do it. About <laughs> psychic musical theater. So, well, I, no. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I, want, I, I want to talk about a couple of things that have been on my mind because I think this is a great forum. All right. Someone said to me very recently, mm. I just have one question. Are people just going crazy out there? Mm. I think people are going crazy. A little bit. Mm. The way they're acting at the traffic lights, the way that they're yelling, they'll be in stores and someone is yelling and some, somebody's screaming and you go on YouTube and you'll see all these people filming other people in stores who are having a, a breakdown. I've seen more, I don't know what to call them, but more, more people probably who live on the streets who are screaming at nothing obscenities and going off the rails. I've seen right. a lot of that. Right. You know, what's interesting, right? Mm. So I had a, an experience where I was walking down the street about 12 years ago here in LA and uh, it was with my wife and we were passing a, a homeless guy that was laying in the street mm. and he was really dirty and really out of it. Mm. And you would feel just awful seeing a human being like this. So we just, but you get used to it. I grew up in New York and then you see it, you get used to it. You just keep walking. And he sits up and as I walk by, he goes, hey. And so we stopped and we turned around. He, he points at me and he looks at my wife. He goes, he's a medium. He's a medium. Now there's no way this guy knew who I was, right. especially 12 right. years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't out there like I am now. And I had to think about that for a while because People who are in that state, they're kind of broken open. Hmm. They've got nothing left to lose. They've been to hell and back or are still in that state of feeling bad. But something, there's like, there's an opening that happens when you let go. And he had let go of a lot of his life, right? But for him to know that and for him to feel so compelled to yell it, especially when I knew he didn't know who I was. Nobody knew who I was then. You think he was gifted? Well, that gets me that as a shaman, I will tell you that when, uh, from the shamanic perspective, when we talk about certain um, things that are labeled as mental disorders, mm -hmm. so, look, this is a case by case. I'm not making a blanket statement about mental disorders because people need to follow their own path with that. But from the shamanic perspective, Sometimes in the, in the old days, you had somebody who was a channeler and they thought that they were having multiple personality disorder. Right, or just they, Yeah, it's just that they had an ability, their channel was really open and there was no one to teach them that, look, you can control this, separate who's a real spirit guide and who is just an entity coming through. And those people went crazy or they were put away or they died. And we're coming to a point now in time where, yes, we're seeing what we think are people going crazy, but Sometimes going a little crazy is one of the steps to kind of this popping open. Do you know what I mean? You have to go through a lot to have a breakthrough. Hmm. It looks different for everyone. So the work that we do when we want to connect more psychically is actually internal. 
um, the tools that we use, that are, which are wonderful from the saging and the crystals and the energy work and the runes and the symbols, all the different modalities, a hundred of them, those are extensions and tools to use it, but the tools don't create the connection. They amplify the connection. The connection is not in the crystal. The crystal is an amplifier. Mm -hmm. So it's like my guitar makes a sound with or without a speaker, with or without the, it being plugged in, the electric guitar, right? So you plug the electric guitar into the speaker, then that wire contains the, you know, the filament or whatever, the, 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 the nickel and the copper that carries the frequency of the guitar into the speaker. That's kind of like what channeling is. So. May yeah. I ask you when you, I know your bio says shaman, you're bringing up shaman. Were you trained by other shamans or is that part of your lineage? Was it passed trained. down? I have to say something. On one hand, I could say I wasn't trained in anything by anyone. <laughs> I really can say that. Um, and on the other hand, I would say that the teachers I did have showed up very, very briefly. Now, is that a testament to me? No, it's how stubborn I actually was in my whole life. I could never, I could never sit in class. I could never practice anything for more than you know twenty minutes at a time. I had friends who were amazing musicians could sit there and play the guitar, practice four hours a day, the same scale, and I would, after five minutes, my hand would ache, and I thought boy, I'm just terrible, I can't meditate, I can't sit and practice properly, anything. Mm. So the universe being as beautiful and gracious as it was, was like, okay, we're gonna send teachers who are gonna just teach him real quick. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love it. And then they were gone. Evelyn Wood <laughs> shamanism. Excuse me? Evelyn Wood shamanism. <laughs> that, you're, I don't know if all your viewers are gonna know what that is. You just aged us, because I know Evelyn Wood was the speed reader. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's built for me too. My okay. God. All right. So I didn't have to, guys. Yes, you will have your teachers are there. They'll they're gonna, they're there to spark you. Uh, someone like me who who couldn't sit and study, maybe I just had maybe I had attention attention deficit disorder, or maybe my, it's my karma to absorb information that way and then then build it and be. In my opinion. It helps you sometimes to not study so much because then you can be more original with who you are. Your personality can come through what you do. Because we tend to, when we, right? Because when we tend to learn with a teacher over and over time, we tend to want to become like the teacher. I think a good teacher is, a great teacher is the one who helps you be more you in your way with your gift. Absolutely. And I can tell you as a singer, that is the truth because I know both worlds. I was so disciplined. I mean, when I'm into something, then you have my attention. This, you have my attention. Other things, not so much. But um, I was so, so, so disciplined as an actress, as a singer, period. And then I let it go and it came back to me, was presented during a ceremony and a shaman said, you need to pursue this. Music never left you. And I find this freedom now I never allowed myself before. And I find in the freedom is, that is the universe that I want to connect with. That is the place I want to channel to give and heal people. I totally get what you're saying, that it's great to rehearse. Yes. It's right. And practice. practice. But there's a time for that, that skill. But the huge time after that is to the, the let go. The, the soul leap, you have to leap. Mm -hmm. so, as, so as a shaman, my experiences came where when I would go in deep into meditation, I would fall into trance. I didn't know how I did it. I thought I fell asleep. Guys, I thought I fell asleep. So I would practice meditation with a friend. And then I would, I would, I would honestly, I would wake up. And the last thing I knew I was meditating, then I would, opened my eyes and my friend at the time, she said, she was just had this weird look on her face. And I go, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. She goes, you've been talking nonstop. Wow. And she would write down some of the things I had said, but it was never me, it was the guides. So, you know, sometimes you get a lot of credit for something that you discover rather than you invented. But if anything, that I pat myself on the back for is that I stuck to it. And uh, 
I separated what was my own thoughts and what were the spirit guides messages. What is this thing called imagination? Because people will think, oh, you're just imagining this, these words are coming to you. <sighs> imagination by our definition now means that you're making something up. That's what imagination basically means across the board. So your imagination means you made it up. Earlier, you'd asked me, you told me before we started filming about that uh, Merlin is one of your favorite spirit guides. So let me tell you about a story about Merlin. Mm -hmm. Someone once said to me, how can you channel Merlin? He's just a character in a story. He's not a, he's not a, he never, never was real. So I can channel Tchaikovsky and I can channel Tesla and I can channel George Washington and Abraham Lincoln or whoever, because they're real, but Merlin's not real. Well, mm. so I said, let me explain this to you. Authors are channels. Yes. Their, their channel is open. Mm. And what if Merlin is a spirit guide? Mm. Do you believe in spirit guides? I said, he goes, yes. I said, okay, so what if Merlin is a spirit guide that has been around since the beginning of time and wants to get his message about transformation and magic Ooh. through to the people, mm. but he's not going to incarnate. Mm -hmm. He's not going to take a lifetime. And so he speaks to the author and the author begins to write it 500 years ago or whenever it was. Oh. And, that, and that archetype of Merlin as the wizard is so strong Oof. that it shows up as Dumbledore and Harry Potter and shows up as Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. It's the same archetype. Merlin with the white beard and the long white hair speaks in a particular way. Why? Because that is actually what he sounds like. When I've channeled Merlin, that is what he sounds like. He has that kind of accent. He has that kind of gravelly voice. And so he has come through to people in this way. So there's no such thing as you thinking, was this real or not? Because you don't have any proof of anything for 20,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago. What are we basing this on? Knowledge, oh my God, it's debated all the time. What is true? What is not true? What's a fact? What's not a fact? So shamans, psychics, intuitives have been talking about Atlantis for a long time. Lemuria, yes. Lyra, the Pleiades, yes. Andromedans. And we have been giving detailed channelings of what the beings from those places are like. Mm -hmm. We've been channeling locations of star systems. We've been channeling where there's energy centers in the different parts of the world. and Every year we're finding something else out, whether it's from ancient aliens and now, <laughs> oh, suddenly now, CNN, the New York Times, everyone is admit admitting that UFOs are real. From the Pentagon down, 10 years ago they weren't. Right. Which brings us to 2020. So my teacher, since we're talking about teachers, the teacher that I had the longest who I wanted to actually take a moment to honor, his name was Alex Murray and Alex Murray has passed away this year and he was mm -hmm. the first channeler I went to in New York City in the 90s as a young man and he gave me a message that I would be doing this work. So incredibly gifted psychic medium and channeler and had a circle in his home every Tuesday night on the Upper West Side and I call him New York's best kept secret because he was in the top, in, in my top three channelers of all time but he never you know, we kind of wanted to go out there big in the world. Anyway, um, when 2012 was coming up and everyone was getting ready for the Mayan calendar, you know, the date of 2012, I think it was December 21st. I had asked him, I said, Alex, uh, what's going to happen on that day? There's nothing, Riz. I said, nothing? He goes, it's off by eight years. Oh, how interesting. Mm. In 2012, he told me that the count that, that our perception of the Mayan calendar was off by eight years. He goes, it's not for another eight years, the change. So obviously 2020. Wow. And you so know, this happened and you were aware. Oh, you told this me. This is it. But I had no idea what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. We as intuitives and psychics, we like to imagine it that everyone just starts glowing with rainbows and going, hey. <laughs> I'm awakening but he knew he didn't know about the pandemic he just said the big awakening is in eight years 
Hmm. So many times the messages from the guides, they don't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but they tell you the time period of this is where the shift will be very powerful. So obviously what happened in that year has changed the world and how we live. Yeah. And has made, and I will tell you from, from the trenches or working on the front lines with people is that after the first year, which was last year after the pandemic, um, now people are really hungry and energized for deep personal transformational work. They are ready. Mm. I lead retreats all around the world every year. My wife and I, we have a company called Sacred Earth Retreats. And we go to Egypt, we go to the power centers in Egypt, in Japan, in Ireland, uh, Machu Picchu, uh, Colombia, Ireland, India. And every year we go and the last year has been unprecedented with how many people want to join these retreats because oh, beautiful. they're they're realizing the institutions are not giving them the answers. We saw this split politically with people. You're either um, on this side or that side. And now it's starting to be where both of those sides are going, I don't even know if my side is the right one anymore. I, I, I don't want your side, but then again, I'm questioning my own side. So what's the, what's the other side? Well, we'll figure it out. There's, there's, there's something new. There's a new perspective coming. Well, and let me ask you a question. So I know we're going to get to some channeling yes. and I'm, I'm so excited for whomever doesn't know you yet or experience you in this way to right. have that yummy experience. But I want to hearken back to something you said at the beginning of this and just briefly wrap that piece up that you said there was something on your mind and you've noticed, somebody said to you, have you noticed people going a little crazy? And you said, indeed you have. What was, what was the through line there? Well, what, is what I was talking about was that you may have to go crazy to, to get to sanity. You may have to die a thousand times to realize how important life is. Die a thousand times meaning get your heart broken or go through stuff, right? I mean, everyone who's watching this knows that. You, you, some of the things that you felt you could have just died from emotionally. Yeah. You got your life out of. They made you who you are today. Yeah. So that's the process of creation is that it takes something to break through. You know, um, I, I have a feeling already that the topic we are talking about, the guides want to continue. Cool. <laughs> so um, when I, as soon as I said about 2020 and things changing, they went, okay, I just felt them come in and go, yeah, we're going to step there. I'm going to tag them in like WWF. I love this so much. And by the way, folks, uh, uh, over a hundred different beings, if it's okay that I call them that, energies come through you, oh, well yeah. known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did tell Riz, I'm just saying up front, my request. And we don't know if it's going to be met because, as you all know, this will be divine. Whomever comes through, whatever comes through, I'm open and ready. I made a request first for the Elohim because I was like, that would be beyond. Sure. And uh, if not, Merlin, awesome. And then again, I'm let go. So. Okay. Yes. Um, and then after, because I want to hear what your experience was like at my circle, because so we, we met at my circle. I didn't remember that when we sat down uh, because it was months ago. But I'm curious, uh, but we'll do, we'll save that for the end. Okay. So um, let's see who comes through. And if you're ready, I mean, I'm ready. I'm going to kind of lay back a little bit this way. Beautiful. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. You look amazing. And um, I am absolutely ready. I feel. Screen, my head is all tiny now because I'm leaning back. <laughs> it's okay. You don't need to look at me. You just need to listen. All right. Are we ready? Yes, ready. Thank you, Riz. At home, Thank if you, you want to be in the mood and you really want to drop in with me, mm. you can drop in with me and let's um, just let's close our eyes just for a few moments. Close our eyes like this, and I want you to just take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Hold the breath for a moment and blow it out. All right. Just imagine a beautiful light coming from the point between your eyebrows and surrounding you in a circle of light, expanding in waves and ripples like ripples in a pond, waves of light going up and around you and behind you in every direction, sending light and love and blessings to yourself and to 
anything and everyone around you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you later. I feel the guides coming through. Just give me a moment and uh, I'll see you after they leave me. Beautiful. I'm Phineas. <laughs> Hello, Phineas. When one mentions transformation, when one is changing the form of one thing to another, though your scientists have told you that matter cannot be destroyed, that only it is possible for it to change its form. And so as you have been studying your metaphysics, or your paranormal, or your supernatural. What is important to remember is that your perspective on that which is metaphysical, meaning that which is larger or wider or beyond your perception of things in the physical. You feel the breeze, though you cannot take a picture of it. You may only take a photo of the wind's effect on a thing if a tree is blown over or the energy of the wind blowing through the trees, you may see the flutter. And so you say, ah, there is the breeze, there is the wind. And so that which is metaphysical only refers to that which is beyond your current physical perceptions. And so the metaphysical indeed is the physical, but simply in a wider understanding. Your dog can hear frequencies that are beyond your own capabilities of listening, can't they? The dog can hear a whistle. And that frequency is beyond the capacity of you to hear it. It does not mean that it is not there. You simply cannot hear it. Molecules, atoms, things that you need a microscope to see, your eye cannot see it. And so you have developed a technology that can permit you to see beyond what your physical eyes are capable of. So you have a telescope or a microscope. And so that which you refer to as the paranormal, you have this very slippery term called normal. And that normal is what you see as a consistent experience in life, that two plus two is four and that is normal. If it were to equal five, that would not be normal, nor would it compute according to your own calculations and your own mathematical systems. That which is considered to be paranormal or supernatural is actually the natural world. It is just a part of the natural world that you have not yet studied, nor have had the experience fully to immerse yourself in the course of study to understand that which is supernatural or paranormal. The paranormal is normal. It is part of your reality to have spirits or entities as you refer to them. They are intelligent, sentient, personalities, essences, that which you refer to as entities or ghosts. They are from an intelligence, an identity, a being, you might say, as you are a being. You are a being, being human. That is what you are referring to in your physical existence. And so what we are referring to is your entire understanding and your perspective day to day of what this reality called Earth is and your navigation being rough or smooth over these waters. You yourself have understood and are learning that your reality is what you feel. It is not necessarily the terms that you deem to be factual regarding your environment. For example, there are certain people who are imprisoned but do not feel imprisoned. Their mood is not depressed nor angry. They have surrendered to that experience. And so their cells and their body are quite healthy. And yet they are in a state of imprisonment physically that you would never wish for yourself. 
Now, a person may be living outside of the prison walls, having the freedom to do most likely anything that is legal in your society, and yet they feel imprisoned. That is usually due to their traumas or their experiences emotionally day to day. And that feeling of imprisonment is their reality, thereby creating energy within the body of discontent. And so the cells, the bones, the nervous system, the immune system shall respond accordingly to the emotional vibration of the being. Are you following us? I am following you, thank you. And I'm, so when you say that, what piques my curiosity, Phineas, is how would somebody reverse that? So this, these feelings, these thoughts, are populating the body, the bones, the cells, the experience, and making that someone's reality. How, I understand the idea of accessing feelings or changing feelings and thoughts, but that's very easily said. How can someone literally redo, rewrite what's going on physically and experientially in their life? One can rewrite, one must re-educate or deprogram then reprogram. Let us clarify. First, if we were to ask you, where do your feelings come from? Where do your feelings come from? Some might respond from my heart. Some may respond that they do not know, they simply are there. Perhaps one will say, that their feelings come from a divine energy, a higher source, God, the universe, and that is where their feelings come from. Yet they own their own feelings. They say that I am happy, I am angry, I am sad. Your feelings are the direct result of your core beliefs. Your beliefs about right and wrong create your emotional reality, nothing else. Let us give you a simpler example. Okay. In certain cultures, there are behaviors that will be considered acceptable or not acceptable socially regarding their own moral compass. For example, if you were to sit before a guru in certain Eastern countries, but you were to wear your shoes or face the bottoms of your feet toward the guru, that would be a sign of disrespect and that feeling would occur because the belief is that you do not show the bottoms of your feet for they are considered, again, another core belief, to be dirty or have an energy that is polluted in some way. Therefore, remove that behavior from you and point your feet away from the guru. There are simple table manners in different countries. If one were to belch after a meal in certain countries, it would be considered feeling or an expression of satisfaction with the meal and not an eye would blink at the table. Try that in a Western society. <laughs> you may be thrown out of that home. Mm. Certainly, you would not be invited again. And so behaviors, the reactions to those behaviors are due to the beliefs that the person holds. Let us give another example. If you are watching a sporting event, let us say that it is baseball or football or basketball, and your team is losing the game, this would create frustration, anger, sadness, disappointment, perhaps anger. And they are consistently flubbing their opportunities not playing consistently in a quality manner, in the manner that you wish for them to play in, so that you might experience winning. The joy of winning, the elation of your team in victory. And so as your team is losing, as the minutes go by, and the clock is ticking down to the final seconds where the execution of your team, as they are banished back to their locker room in defeat, as that is approaching that moment, and the emotional energy is building, the feeling of anxiousness and anger could be changed instantly. How? What if you were to say to that person, do you wish to feel the feeling of triumph and winning? 
they would perhaps shout at you and say, of course I do. Then you say, well, I have a solution for you. Root for the other team. <laughs> That's good. They are jubilant and winning. Yeah. Mm. Well, what do you think the chances of them making that switch would be? Mm. And that is because their beliefs are in loyalty. Mm. Whatever the version of loyalty. Now their loyalty is to losing. Let us say that that team would continue to lose every single game for many years to come. At what point would that fan give up their love for that team? Their fierce loyalty eventually would come to an end. And we all know that there are some who will take it to the grave. They will stand with their losing team till the end of days. And that is because they believe in loyalty by the definition that they have kept. And they will do it no matter what. If it causes them great pain, they will stay in it. The inflexibility of your perspectives and your beliefs will strangle you. Everything in nature has flexibility. Even the mountain, which seems to be stoic and powerful and solitary is flexible. Does it not have avalanches and shed its rocks? Mm. Does it not get weathered by the wind and the storms and the snow and the sun and the rain? Mm -hmm. Even the volcano knows it must erupt to change and to shift. And so flexibility is everywhere in the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. And so the human being who is here in the school of earth must be flexible. Do not hold to your opinions so tightly. Be flexible. Very often neutrality is powerful as a gear, because then you are being able to be moved into a better place. Your pandemic was the first time in history of humankind where every human being on the face of the earth would have to experience the same event in exactly the same way. Mm. Not any religious movement, nor any natural disaster encompassed the entire earth. And so, as metaphysicians, as spiritual students and explorers and master teachers in training, you wish for oneness. You felt perhaps a leader would come and unite you. Oh, that would be too problematic, for you have too many strong core beliefs. You believe in skin color and gender or non-gender. You believe in ethnicities. You believe in ageism and all sorts of things prevent you from finding one person to lead you all. And so that is when nature, nature that you are a part of and is responding to a very important quality in human beings. And that is you have a very powerful mechanism within you to consistently grow and seek higher ground, higher elevated thinking, change. You are always wanting more. Think about it. Everything that you do and experience, you want more. Even if you were to give up everything that you own because you say you want less, it is because you want more of something else. You want less of this and more of that. If you are a monk who sold his Ferrari, it is because you want more, not less. If you wish to even leave the earth, you no longer wish to be alive. It is because you want more of something else, not this. It is in your nature. More is the energy that is consistently happening in all of reality, even in the plant kingdom. More, more seasons, more change, more withering, drying, going down into the earth, fertilizing again and sprouting up again in the spring. It is beyond your control. Oh, you may resist it, you may resist change, but it is happening every moment. Even the cells in your body are changing. Every moment is new. 
and now this moment is new, and now this moment is new. And let us wait a moment, ah, and now this moment is new. We just experienced three moments. And here's the fourth and now the fifth. Everything is now. And so in 2020, as they say, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> and in this discussion, our hindsight is about 2020. It was to create an energy of oneness where the focus of the people was about life and how they wanted to live it, whether or not they believed in the origins or the backstories about this virus or not matters not. You may be on either side of the fence or under it or above it or within the fence itself, it does not matter. What matters is it got you thinking how you would rather live. And so great emotion began to come forth where the core beliefs and opinions began to be expressed amongst the people. Friends were becoming defriended <laughs> and new friends, alliances began simply because another person believed what you believed. Mm -hmm. And so evolution was not going to happen the way, the pretty way that many of you had wanted it to. It would happen in this way. And this way would allow you to go through all of the motions and emotions that were necessary for your breakthroughs. Now you are coming into this new world, this new earth, you may call it, but it is simply the same old school with the same old tried and true principles, which is your reality is how you feel. You have been sad at parties, everyone is celebrating. It is a joyous occasion. Perhaps even the party is for you. Even at your own party, you might be sad. As others are celebrating you, you are not feeling like celebrating yourself. It could also be true that you are at a very sad event. Perhaps you're at a funeral while everyone is in mourning, but you are connected to the soul of the person who has deceased. You are seeing their grace and beauty on the other side. And so your connection intuitively allows you to be more at peace at the funeral. And so your inner world is one at peace while others in this sad situation are in mourning and pain. So your external environment does not dictate your inner reality. Your reality is what you feel no matter where you are. Beautiful. Thank you. May I ask you, who is helping us through this time of transition? Your Not of this world. Are helping you. Your future selves are helping you. Mm. Since you have been studying the nature or the concept of time, consider mm. this. If you were to re replace the words, the universe, the next time you ask yourselves, why is the universe doing this to me? Why is God doing this to me? Why is anything doing this to me? Replace it with this phrase. Why is my future self assisting me in this way? Use those words, my future self instead of the universe. Why is the universe doing this to me? Why is my future self assisting me in this way, in this way. Understand that everything is for your assistance, for your grand purpose. And that grand purpose is the realization of oneness. Every lifetime that you live, it is for you to realize this oneness, this love for if your spiritual awakening is devoid of love, my dear friends, you might be missing something. I may I ask, I recently heard that the indigenous shamans foretold that the next shamans were going to come from the West and not the ones that are being born, not young, but those of us who are established and here already to help bring the world into a new era. I know personally, I'm very called to that. 
Can you speak about us being homo luminous or luminous beings as shamans today, the everyday you must people? understand the concept and truth of what you are referring to as yin and yang, commonly described as the feminine and masculine energies. Are you familiar? Yes, absolutely. Currently, with the state of things, it becomes problematic to refer to the yin and yang in the masculine and feminine terminology for it has been dragged through the mud as being associated with gender. Now, gender itself is unnecessary in this discussion. Yin and yang refers to the intuitive, the receptive, the nurturing, or the progressive, or the forthcoming, proactive, protective energies. And so that is the yang. The ocean is the yin and yang. The flow of the ocean, the shore could be yin or yang. Now, Understanding this as the shamanic healing is expanding as you are returning to the gifts from nature to help you connect to those energies, whether it, it's through the food or it is through the sacred medicinal healing that the shamans have their transcendental experiences and are now has become quite popular in your society. The shaman is there to bring you from darkness into light, so to speak, to bring you from the darkness of the womb. We are not referring to darkness as evil. Darkness as the unknown. The womb in the mother is dark. And yet all life comes from it. Therefore, the light comes from the darkness. And the shaman is there to bring you to that. And so, yes, now is the understanding beyond ageism where only those who are indigenous and yet, my dear, the chapters of Earth's history, or let us say, the authority of knowledge is not necessarily in lineage. There are many very popular musicians, since you are referring to music, legendary musicians whose children do not possess the personalities of their forebearers, their ancestors. Their path was not to play music, though they have knowledge of the underpinnings and the behind the scenes of that art. Many legendary artists do not have legendary artist children, do they? Correct. And so it is the rose that springs from the concrete between. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. And mm. so where you will find it will be in unexpected faces, unexpected accents, unexpected backgrounds. But since you are beings that incarnate repeatedly, the wise will understand to be open, to understand that it speaks through. There are many ethnicities that you identify that may come through another. There may be an African voice channeled through a child of another skin color and the reverse may be true for that which you refer to as the other side does not have skin color or ethnicity. Though the personality that the spirit guide chooses to come through may have inflections, may have personalities and essence and certain qualities that you identify with as reminiscent of certain ethnicities that are here. For as Phineas, as we come through the channeler, there is a certain European accent in the being. That's because the energy must use the tongue and the mechanisms of the channeler. Channelers channel in their own language. They do not necessarily or often channel in another language for the mechanism is used for what it is there for. You do not treat a sports car as you treat a horse and buggy or a rocket ship, though they all propel you forward, don't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are very pleased that our connection with you and we send you a hearty greeting across the waves of consciousness and shores of knowledge to you and your listeners and viewers. We leave you with this. 
You are made of starlight. No matter what you have been through, no matter what traumas you have experienced, no matter if you feel you do not believe in love anymore, your lack of belief in those areas further reinforces that indeed you are loving, for only a loving being could know or recognize the lack of it. Only one made of light could recognize the lack of it. And so do not be swept away by your fears and sadness about the current state of affairs in the world. That is only the bad news, my friends. There is awakening happening of all ages. There is magic happening around you at this very moment, in the very room you are sitting in, listening to this transmission. You only need to allow your sensitivity to be your strength, to use it to nourish and heal your body, your mind and your spirit, and to help others to do the same. Do not feel weakened by your sensitivities. Surrender to them as one would surrender to an embrace, to a dance, to music, to the light. And you will find within yourself the peace that you have been searching for and your purpose. And you may direct this energy in any capacity. Spiritual work is not only intuitive healing work. In the traditional sense, it can be done in any manner, in any profession. Allow yourself to surrender to the magic and the love that you are. I am Phineas and I greet you. That was so beautiful. Surrender to the magic, and I'm writing that down, and the love that you are. And while Riz is coming back, I'll just give him some time and grace to fully come back and remind you. He's got several books, some written by him, and some written also by he and his wife. You can see the spelling of his name here. And that's also his website.com. And Riz, Hi. wow, welcome back. I always say, I always say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> like a little nap that I, I take. Um, Phineas is um, quite- He's a, an American clockmaker, right? From the 1800s, a mentalist, a- yes, uh, he was- um, Founder he of New Thought. He, Oh, did you, re you, did you research him? Yes, Phineas Quimby. Um, he also, that life, he was reincarnated. He was a teacher, um, actually, I believe he was a rabbi named Phineas, who was the great, great grandson of another spiritualist rabbi named Eleazar. So you might look that up, but he reincarnated twice. He incarnated twice with the name Phineas. Um, when I first started channeling these guides, I never looked them up. My wife started looking them up when she came into my life. She said, are these people? I, I never thought to even, I mean, this wow. is 15 years ago. We didn't really Google pe things 15 years ago. So I, I wasn't doing that. And um, I'll tell you an interesting story about Ram Das came to one of my circles. And it was just, I did a circle in Hawaii and I had channeled uh, Emmanuel at mm. that circle. And I know it's funny that I don't know a lot sometimes about the guys that I channel, but because I'm just channeling them and I feel I know about them what I'm supposed to know about them. So I channeled Emmanuel and the circle finished and um, Araya and I sat and talked with him and he had trouble speaking. He was in a wheelchair towards that time of his life, mm -hmm. but he had a helper and he had, he said, when did you start channeling Emmanuel? And I had to think and I told him the year and he looked at his assistant. They both kind of opened their eyes really wide and nodded. So apparently there was someone who was channeling Emmanuel books mm. and Ram Das was writing the foreword or the preface to those books. And that channeler passed away the same year that I started channeling Emmanuel. So it was almost like a handoff. <laughs> and, uh, and I asked Ram Das, I said, is this the same energy signature as the Emmanuel that you experienced for all those years he said absolutely uh, I thought that was really fascinating and interesting um, but there are some channelers out there but that the guides only channel through them I've met people who channel and I know that that guide is only going to come through that person like Phineas and Red Eagle pretty much only come through me but all the others I think other people have channeled them maybe next time we'll get the Elohim 
Okay. Yes. Well, this was beautiful. And what was shared was beautiful. And uh, you asked me, so you asked me what was my experience when I met you. Uh -huh. And uh, it was Red Eagle who came through when I met you. It was pretty incredible. That's you my were... guy, Red Eagle. He's the, he's my message yeah. bearer. And your place is named after him. Yeah, right? Red that's Eagle right. Manor. Red right Eagle Manor. So you came and you, you, did you know what you were coming to when you came to the circle? Ish. I did mean, I read the little blurb. Okay, okay. That Barb sent out, but, yeah. and, so, and I, because I'm familiar, of course, but otherwise I knew it was going to be a very unique experience. Mm -hmm. And of course you explain it before you do the circle. So I was mm -hmm. aware and it was beautiful how you went around. It was a lot of people, but you yeah. got to everybody. And uh, what I found profound, I'm going to really call myself out. It's, it's uncomfortable, but I think it's good to be uncomfortable and vulnerable. But Red Eagle spoke to me and said, what is it about driving? What's going on around driving? And I was like aghast because Why? I had been having panic attacks on, in, not, not constantly, but in, I used to, and I was healed from it. And then it came back. Wow. And it was in very particular circumstances. Okay. And I had literally just come back from a trip and had that experience of complete, I mean, gripping a wheel, um, like my losing my mind. And Red Eagle spoke to me. Now, I'm being honest. I was mortified because I don't know everybody there. And I felt really called out. But at the same time, this was huge, right? When Because when you're going through panic, it is real. It's big. It's... Nobody understands it till it happens. And then you go, okay, now I understand. I'm, I have so much sympathy for people who have panic attacks. Exactly. And somebody who says to someone who's panicking, relax, it's okay, or chill, like it makes it worse. Were you there by yourself or did, were you, did you have anybody with you? I had my partner with me. Okay, did your partner so, know about this? Yeah, because he was in the truck while it was happening. So he must have been like, what is going on at this channeling circle? I can imagine for people who don't, you know, because you know, it's just the way it is when you go to a psychic or a channeler, you really want it to be real. And sometimes it doesn't hit or doesn't connect. Mm. By the way, sometimes that doesn't mean the psychic's not real. It just means that on that day, you just weren't going to get the message that you're, that you wanted to get. But okay. I will say, but, 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 but mm. it was so powerful because Red Eagle broke down panic attacks and, and let everybody there know it is actually has nothing to do with panic ha on, on whatever that situation is. But let me explain that there's something else going on. He went into it and what was gorgeous is A, other people when Red Eagle got to them admitted also to having panic attacks. That's it, Debbie. This is where healing happens is that we have to be vulnerable and just, just say it everyone. You know, we grew up in generations where our parents didn't talk about their emotions and the teachers didn't talk about their emotions and certainly men were not allowed to talk about their emotions. We just have to start that. That inner dialogue just needs to come out and just be vulnerable and, and receive. And that is how, that's actually how I channel. I'm just vulnerable and receive. You know, Red Eagle is this big Native American energy that comes through me. And he, he used to make the joke, because I used to ask him, why would you come through me? And he goes, because that way people get two Indians for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. And I'm dot, not feather, you know, even though I look at, you know, this has nothing. I looked like this before the channeling. Like it was, I always just, this was my look. Indian squared. <laughs> totally. So um, he, he brings such humor to it. And um, maybe we'll do something in the future where we can kind of drop in about panic attacks and anxiety, because that's a big thing that people need to know about. And, and it's very prevalent today. And I, and you know, it didn't occur to me until we're talking about this. I actually have not had one since then. Maybe you got like an energy healing. The guy just dropped in and said, we're going to zap her. It happens, man. Yes. All right. It's huge. So thank you. Thank so you. it was, you know, exactly what you're saying. It was like, going right to the heart of something very dear to me because it was 
messing my life. And, and I didn't know when it was going to pop up. It was rare, but when it popped up, it was completely debilitating. And here I am, this visible person, you know, writing books, book coach, podcast, this and that. And it's like, even me, even me, whether of it's, course. We're right, not here. We whether it's the energy the of the world or what I'm going through, that it was manifesting in this way to get my attention. But he was yeah. brilliant. How he exactly. broke it down. Was, it down. Red Eagle's just a master teacher. And what we've been talking about, and one of the things that I'm focusing on now, you know, I do readings, people can get, they can go to my website and find out about my readings, phone readings and retreats. And um, one of the things that I'm introducing this winter is I'm doing a whole program of, of healing the inner child. Mm. I'm, I never do in-person stuff really anymore, but I'm going to be doing some in-person, like one-on-one -on -one work where I'm literally taking people where we're spending a few hours, just me and them at the farm and going to see the animals and getting the messages from the animals and talking about life, like wisdom walks. So I'm doing oh these things. So I want to know about this. It sounds this awesome. So if anyone's really uh, wants to know about this kind of stuff that I offer, please go to my website and um, follow me on Instagram. And hopefully you can put my Instagram handle so people can uh, reach out to us. And um, I'm glad to uh, connect with you guys audience and thank you for having me. So I have, a question for you here at the end. I mean, first of all, two questions. Anything you want the listeners to know that we haven't covered? Oh my God. Uh, what would I like them to know? What I, anytime anyone asks me that, my, my, my real belief system is this, is that it's never too late to change things. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I want you to know. It's never too late to change things and things really can change. Just give yourself take another deep breath and say that everything that you've experienced so far in your life, that was really your path. Don't resist it. And your path wasn't sad. You're, you had a powerful path because you're powerful. You had a powerful path because you're powerful. And so that was your training. And this is not the time to give up on love or give up on joy or give up on peace. This is not the time. It, this is the time to actually reinforce that even more. So mm -hmm. rebirth yourself. Okay, that's what I want them to know meme thank you that was beautiful and this is dare to dream riz what are you next dare to dream what are your future dreams and goals my dreams are funny you know i um i really want to bring what i do to the world uh but what i'm really about besides what i'm about comes through my work but i want to show that in, in more and more ways so i really want people to start to come back to joy but coming back to joy is a process um I believe that the highest vibration in the world is not peace, but celebration. Peace is great, but then there's one step up, which is I'd rather have 6 billion people dancing together than just even meditating together. So <laughs> what's next for me? I have personal projects. I make music also, by the way. I, couldn't, I could never give up the music, no matter how much I did all my psychic and spiritual work. I still have to pick up the guitar. I still have to write music. I still have to um, put it out there. So um, I'm really in my creative vibe right now. I'm really looking forward to my Halloween party on Saturday. <laughs> I love Halloween. So happy Halloween, even though everybody's watching this Halloween finished. But what I, are you going to be for Halloween? What are you and Araya getting dressed I as? I say it now because this will air after, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's no, it's starting tomorrow night. <laughs> so well, I give it, I'll, oh. I'll let you know. I can't. Um, Send I'll, me pictures. Yeah, yeah. Araya's going to be Elvira. I'm going to be, I'm going to be actually a, um, a famous, classic, legendary WWF wrestler. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh my God. Check out your Instagram page on Monday. Yes, I want to see sure. the pics. Okay. Totally. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Debbie. You're awesome. I wish you all the best. You as well. And I end today's show with this quote from Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God book. You are goodness and mercy and compassion and understanding. You are peace and joy and light. You are forgiveness and patience, strength and courage, a joy and light. You are forgiveness and patience, strength and courage, a helper in time of need, a comforter in time of sorrow, a healer in time of injury, a teacher in times of confusion. You are the deepest wisdom and the highest truth, the greatest peace and the grandest love. 
You are these things. And in moments of your life, you've known yourself as these things. Choose now to know yourself as these things always. Subscribe to this show. Send it to somebody in your family or life you know needs to hear this message. Like and leave a comment. I read them all. This is your weekly number one transformation conversation. Next week on Dare to Dream, I am featuring Neil Guar, founder of Portal to Ascension. Neil bridges heaven and earth with his insight into how ancient history informs our monetary system. And if you're listening to this on podcast and you want to see us, and I recommend you do, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you so much for joining today. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Remember to turn all your dreams into your reality.